I am going to read you a story today that's a very special story. I am a pre-K teacher and we can't be with our children right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have a little boy in our class named Lewis. And Lewis's very favorite story is The Little Mermaid. So when I asked our friends if they had any request for books for me to read, Lewis definitely wanted me to read The Little Mermaid. So I have on my scale leggings like Ariel's tail and a purple top, and I'm all ready to read to Lewis and all of you the story of The Little Mermaid. Sebastian, the court composer, had planned a royal concert. It was in honor of Triton, the sea king, and all of his daughters were to sing. But Ariel, the daughter with the most beautiful voice, hadn't shown up. Triton was losing his patience. Ariel, he cried. Ariel could not hear her father. She was busy exploring a sunken ship. The Little Mermaid wanted to know all she could about the creatures called humans. Oh my gosh, Ariel cried as she held up a fork. Have you ever seen anything so wonderful in all your life? But, but what is it? Her friend Flounder asked. Ariel and Flounder went to ask Scuttle, the seagull. They found him perched on his favorite rock. Ah, uh, it's a, it's a dingle hopper, he said with certainty. Humans use these little babies to um, straighten their hair. Ariel was fascinated. Now she knew one more thing about the humans. Later that day, Ariel was human watching and she spotted a handsome young man on a ship. As soon as she laid eyes on Prince Eric, she fell in love. But soon a storm began to rage. The ship was in trouble. Prince Eric was trying to steer through the storm when a bolt of lightning flashed. The ship's sail caught fire. Rough waves tossed the ship back and forth and Eric went flying into the sea. I must save him, Ariel cried. She dove underneath and pulled the prince safely ashore. Prince Eric was very still for a long time. Scuttle wasn't sure if he was still alive, but suddenly Ariel saw his chest going up and down up and down. Look, he's breathing, she cried. She began to sing a love song to him, but soon she was interrupted by Prince Eric's dog, Max. Ariel hurried back into the water with Flounder by her side. She headed for home. When King Triton found out that Ariel was in love with a human, he became very angry. He destroyed her collection of all her human objects and told Ariel she could never see the prince again. Ariel was very sad. She went to the sea witch Ursula for help. The only way to get what you want is to become a human, Ursula explained. The plan sounded simple enough. Ursula would turn Ariel into a human for three days. If Ariel could get the prince to kiss her, she would remain a human forever. If not, she would turn back into a mermaid and she would belong to Ursula. But there was a price for Ursula's magic. What I want from you is your voice, the evil sea witch demanded. Because she was in love, Ariel agreed. With a swirl of her magic potion, potion Ursula turned, took away Ariel's voice and dropped it into a seashell locket. 
A locket is a little necklace that opens and closes. So she put the voice inside. Ariel looked down where her tail used to be and she saw legs. Flounder quickly swam her up to the surface of the water. Prince Eric had recovered nicely by the time Flounder dragged Ariel to shore. When the prince saw Ariel, he did not know that she was the one who had saved him. Without her voice, Ariel couldn't sing or tell him who she was. But Prince Eric liked Ariel very much. He took her rowing at twilight. Triton asked Sebastian to watch over Ariel. So the crab tried to help things along. He led Scuttle and his friends in a romantic song. Kiss the girl, they sang, but the prince did not kiss Ariel. He did not kiss her on the first day or the second day. On the third day, Scuttle surprised Ariel with the news that Prince Eric was getting married. On board the wedding ship, everyone was busy getting ready, including Vanessa, the bride-to-be, who was singing happily. Scuttle heard her beautiful voice and flew down to the ship, looking through a porthole, it's like a little window in the ship. He saw Vanessa looking into a mirror. Oh, <gasps> she's the sea witch, cried Scuttle. He flew off for help as quickly as he could. In no time, sea creatures and birds rushed the ship and began to attack Vanessa. Vanessa's seashell locket crashed to the deck and it opened up, freeing Ariel's voice just as she pulled herself aboard the ship. The prince heard Ariel speak and at last he knew that Ariel was the one who had rescued him. He went to kiss her, but the sun had set. Ariel's three days were up. You're too late screamed Ursula. We made a deal, Ursula said. The sea witch grabbed Ariel and dove into the sea. When they reached the ocean floor, King Triton appeared. Let her go, he demanded. I might be willing to make an exchange for someone even better, Ursula said slyly. King Triton sadly agreed to the sea witch's deal. Ariel was set free and Triton allowed himself to be turned into a lowly sea creature. Now I am the ruler of the ocean, shouted Ursula. Soon Ursula found herself face to face with Prince Eric. He had come to rescue Ariel. They battled above and below the sea, and finally, Eric killed the wicked Ursula. Triton was the sea king once again. She really does love him, doesn't she? Triton asked Sebastian. The crab assured the king that Ariel belonged with the prince. With a wave of his trident, Triton turned Ariel into a human being. It wasn't long before Prince Eric and Ariel were married and all the creatures of the sea and the land were there to congratulate the happy couple. Well, I hope you all enjoyed The Little Mermaid and Louis, I miss you and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Have a great rest of your day, everyone, and I'll see you soon.